Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be creating this material on a sphere. I'll just go out of my camera. I've got three area lights in the scene. Lighting is extremely important whenever you're creating materials. But if you check the description or the top comment, you can go ahead and download the studio setup so that you can follow along without any issues. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to start by going to create, shader, cinema 40 octane and I'm going to go to an octane composite drag and drop that onto my sphere then I'm going to make sure I'm going to plug in Cinema 4D Octane and open in my live viewer and I'm just going to send the scene over to my live viewer so I can actually see what's happening here with any changes that I make double click on that Octane material and open up the node editor an Octane composite material allows you to blend various materials together. You can see that we can connect three, but just keep in mind that I can't connect a regular Octane material. You'll see if I try and drag this out here, I'm, I'm incapable of connecting this to any of these nodes. Okay, so you can only use a sub-material, and now I can go ahead and start connecting this. So I'm going to connect the first sub-material to material slot one, and this sub-material, if I go to basic, it basically has all of the different material types that you'll see on a regular octane material. Now just go ahead and change your material type to glossy. Go ahead and select your sub material. And just to start off, I'm going to go to my specular over here because I don't want this material to be very shiny or have a lot of really intense specular highlights. So I'm going to bring this value down to 0 0.09. I'm also going to go to the roughness and just increase the float value just to add some roughness onto our material. So I'm going to put this on 0 0.4. So I know currently we obviously can't see anything happening over here, but once we start connecting some other nodes, obviously it's going to start bringing this material to life. Okay, so let's move on to the left hand side over here. You'll see there's a whole lot of different colors. We just want to pay attention to everything that's green. So everything that is green is considered to be a generator and generators uh, basically generate different patterns and effects for materials. So we'll be using the noise generator. Drag and drop that onto your scene. Let's connect this to the diffuse and to the bump as well. Go ahead and select your noise. And over here by type, you can see that there's four different types of noise. Uh, patterns that we can use. You can play around with the different patterns and see exactly what they do. That's the whole point of a procedural material. You can always modify it and there's just so much uh, customization. But we'll be using a noise that is called chips. Right, so that's going to give us this cracked uh, chip defect and we're going to be modifying this and make it look like the wall has actually got some chips and damage on it. So we need to modify some of these sliders over here. So the, the octaves in the Omega slider basically determine how detailed this material is. If I decrease this, the lines get a lot sharper. If I increase it, it starts adding some more detail, as you can see. So I've got some predetermined values that I'm going to input here. So I'm going to put my Omega on 0 0.54. And then by the gamma, this controls how much of this material is visible. You can see if I decrease that, you can see exactly what's happening. So over here by my gamma, I'm going to put this on 0 0.25. And on the contrast, this is almost like clamping a gradient value to create more harsher separations between the values. So if I increase this value, you can see that these cracks get a lot sharper and they look more intense, which is exactly what I want. So I'm actually going to put my contrast value all the way up. I'm going to put it on 100. So clamp it right up to the maximum value so that I get these really sharp looking cracks. So a really fantastic way to add some color onto this material is to use a mapping node. So these maroon colored nodes, all of these are called mapping nodes. We're going to be using a gradient map. So just drag and drop that and you'll see before I let go of my mouse button, these lines turn orange and if I let go right now, it automatically connects all of those nodes for me. So it connects, it connects the noise to the gradient and the gradient to the diffuse. So go ahead and select the gradient and now we can start adding our own colors onto this material. Okay, so make sure the gradient is selected. Now you can obviously use whatever colors you want over here, or you can use the exact same colors that I'm going to be using on this material. I'm just going to make sure I'm left clicking over here to create another one of these color pickers, and I'm just going to clamp this a little bit closer. So this first color picker is going to determine what color these cracks are actually going to be. So I'm going to double click over here. I'm using the HSV slider. By V, I'm going to put this on 41. And then my second one over here, I'm going to put this value on 30, my V value on 30. And then the last slide over here is basically going to be the color of the wall itself. So I'm going to put my H on 211, my S on 20, and my V on 27. So now I'll get that nice blue hue 
on the wall. And you can see over here the cracks itself. It almost looks like an underlying layer of plaster or something underneath. It's just a nice additional touch or detail to this material. All right, so play around with that. Like I said, you can use your own colors or you can use the one, uh, the colors that I'm using. Now I'm gonna go back to my noise over here and I'm actually going to click on UVW transform so that it automatically creates a transform node for me. Now I can go ahead and adjust the scaling and the rotation. And over here by the rotation, I'm going to uh, actually put this value on 35. So you can play around with this rotation slider and you can see it's almost, it works like a seed uh, from this one particular angle. It's like changing the seed of where these cracks are being visible on our material. All right, and this is just a nice way to control the scale. Obviously, you can decrease that so that you have way more cracks or increase that so that you have bigger cracks on your material. That is completely up to you. And that is the power of a procedural material. We can always alter it, which is fantastic. And just another tip, sometimes it's also really good to select the noise and go to projection and change your texture projection type to something like XYZ to UVW. Sometimes it gives you a, mu a much nicer uh, layout of the actual effect on your material. You'll see if I select texture projection, lock the aspect ratio and just scale this up. Sometimes the way the material is actually laid out uh, looks a lot better with this type of texture projection. So play around with that, maybe try box, try cylindrical, mesh UV, but I know that XYZ to UVW also works well on really complex geometry, like we've, like we've got this dragon in our scene. So just play around with texture projection and see what works best for you. So I'm actually going to put that back on mesh UV because I am happy with the way that it's laid out on my sphere. All right, so at this point we could be done, but since we're using a composite material, I have the option to connect another material over here and mix between those two materials to add some more complexity onto our material. So I'm gonna just scroll up here and drag out another sub material and let's connect this to material two. Now select your sub material. Let's go to the specular, just like we did with the first material over here. I wanna bring the specular value down so that it's not very shiny. So I'm gonna put this value on 0 0.13 and press enter. Now I'm going to be using another generator. So I'm gonna be using the noise again and I'm gonna attach this to the bump. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating some more underlying detail on this material. Like there'll be smaller bumps on top of this wall material, which just adds a little bit more realism. You'll see exactly what I mean when we start mixing these together. But for now, just create that noise generator and connect that to the bump. Let's select the noise. Let's change the type to turbulence and let's adjust some of these values. So I'm gonna put my octaves on seven, my omega on 0.70, my gamma on 0.33 and my contrast on 0.06. All right, so if you go back to our Octane Composite and you select Material 2, I'll get this mask slider. So you can drive the way it blends between two masks by actually using a generator. So maybe if you had a noise pattern and you connected that to the Material 2 mask, it would use the, the pattern of the noise to create a mask that blends between two materials. But in this case, I'm just going to be using the slider. All right, so I'll go to Material 2 and you'll see if I start increasing this value, it starts blending with the underlying layer. Now this material is completely white. That's why there's so much white that's coming through in this material. So we need to rectify that and we're going to be creating another noise. So I'm gonna drag and drop that out here and I'm going to connect this to the diffuse. Now go ahead and select the noise and I'm gonna change my noise type to turbulence and I'm gonna input some predetermined values here. So I'll put my octaves on seven my omega on 0 0.7. So you can also pay attention to what's happening over here. You can see that the noise or the diffuse is blending with our other material. So this is also a cool way to add some additional color on top of this uh, material as well. Okay, I'm gonna put my gamma on 0 0.59 and my contrast on 11.47. Okay, now I wanna control the overall color over here because this is still completely white. So I'm gonna be using the gradient node and just connect this here automatically, select gradient. And over here I'm going to, because it's this white value that we basically seen over here. So 
I'm going to bring this down. Let's say make it really dark because I want this overlying pattern or should I say grungy pattern on top of the material to be quite subtle. All right, I still want that detail to be there. So you can see it creates this nice uh, additional detail on top of the material. If I go ahead and disconnect that, okay, and just bring this back to one, we can see the material looks cool, but adding that additional layer of detail on top with the texturing just adds a bit more realism. So I'm going to increase my mask value again and just connect this to the diffuse. So just pay close attention to areas like this. It's just adding that additional layer of detail on top of the material. And even our bump map, we can see coming through over here. Right? It's quite subtle, but it's usually those really small uh, details that add uh, to the overall realism of the material. I'm also going to select my noise, create another UVW transform node that's connected to this noise. And for my scale value over here, I'm going to put this on 2.4. So I'm just going to increase the overall scale. Right, let's just send it back. So you'll usually see these details, uh, which is quite subtle on areas wherever there's highlights. Because remember those highlights also being driven by the specular. So if I select this, go back to specular and start increasing this a lot more. Now you can really see those details on here, but now the material is obviously becoming very, very shiny. So I want to make sure that I'm bringing that value back to 0 0.13. So remember, you can control just how much of the second submaterial is visible on our final material over here. Just go back to the Octane Composite and maybe just increase this value a little bit more so that we can bring out some more of those details. So now we can see it's a lot more predominant. Maybe I'll put this on 0 0.34. And there we go. So now we can see some more of the bump on the surface and some of those breakups in these specular highlights, which has been driven by this noise generator. All right, so we are done with this material, but if you really wanted to control some of the overall glossiness and what needs to be rough, uh, remember we blend in the first material with the second. So this first material over here, let's just check our value if we go to material two. So since this is on 0 0.34, our predominant material is going to be this first one because it's on 34%. I blended into the first one. So this one's still determining the overall glossiness of our material. So you can see if I plug this uh, gradient into the roughness, it starts adding this map to determine which areas are going to be glossy and which ones are going to be rough. So that's also a really cool way to determine the overall roughness and glossiness of a material by using an actual map or a generated map. Right, so that's up to you. It depends on the overall look and feel that you're going for with your material. But in this case, I just wanted to use a universal roughness value of 0 0.4 to get this overall aesthetic. Okay, so we're done. I just want to see how this looks on the dragon sculpture in our scene. So I'll unhide the dragon, hide the sphere, and snap to the main camera. I'm actually going to duplicate this camera and delete the protection tag over here and then snap to this camera so that I can just zoom in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to close this and let's just drag and drop this onto our dragon. And there we go. So now we can see all of these really cool damage uh, details in the dragon over here and it's 100% procedural which is really cool. Remember like I said to control how this is actually laid out if I go back to the node editor I can just go to my check texture projection over here and change this to XYZ to UVW and now we get a slightly different layout and we still got all of those chips and damage on our dragon. Okay, so I hope this tutorial helped you to create a nice chipped or damaged material and that you've learned quite a bit from using the node editor. All right, guys, so thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Remember, a procedural material means that you can always go back and adjust anything. You can even add another sub material on here and add even more detail on top of this material. It's completely up to you. I just wanted to show you how to construct this and I hope you understand some of the basics of these nodes. You can see just how simple it is to set up a nice procedural material that's 100% customizable. This is a really, really powerful workflow for creating materials. Right, so thank you so much for watching my videos and tutorials. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye.